a scene of devastation as far as the eye can see. This is what Israel has done to large parts of Rafah city, reducing it to rubble, making refugees of its inhabitants. Building floors collapsed on top of each other. Roads cracked wide open. And if the message from Israel's war machine was not clear on the ground, the skies over Rafah had another message. Israeli military leaflets warning residents to flee. People heeded those calls, grabbing whatever they can and running for safety. More than 25,000 people have fled their homes across the Strip. The Jews told us to leave, so everybody left. They called us, told us to leave. I'm scared. In Gaza, no one has been safe. For more than two weeks, the war in Gaza that has raged on has plunged the Palestinian people into scenes of death and destruction it has never before witnessed. All while the world stands by and watches helplessly. The overwhelmed staff and crowded rooms at the Shifa hospital tell the stories of this war's innocent civilian casualties. Women and children still making nearly half of that casualty toll. These are victims of Israel's so-called war on Hamas. Gaza's human suffering has been compounded by an 18-month Israeli siege that has all but crippled every facet of life here. Life has become unbearable as people wait for hours to get water and food. In a few hours, the Israeli military pauses its daily war in its so-called humanitarian corridor. People run to the streets, recovering what they can from their damaged homes and getting their hands on whatever they can find in Gaza's market. One or two hours are not enough. They give us one hour and call it a ceasefire. It's not a ceasefire. Even if they say it is a ceasefire, they keep bombing us and invading us. In the midst of the war that has ruined thousands of families, a chance for families to bury the dead and lay them in peace. A peace that eluded them in life. And one that will elude them so long as Israel's war continues. Ayman Mohideen Al Jazeera, Gaza.